basic design concepts when you're trying to screen your neighbor. We all have neighbors that uh, may love our neighbor, but they always say great fences make great neighbors. But maybe you don't want a fence, you want something more live that maybe attracts some birds to your house. Um, and we're assuming in this situation they have a good neighbor. They're not a hoarder, there's not a bunch of garbage outside their house. But I just want to go through some basic design principles that I've used over the last 45 years in creating a better screen between you and your neighbor. So let's say this is your house. Oops, wrong one. Let's back that up. Okay, so let's say this is your house right here and you're just trying to screen the view over to here. You both have decks out here. A lot of these new subdivisions only have one third acre lots, so you're almost on top of your neighbor. Um, let's say you know your decks are lined up here and really usually when people are most concerned about screens is in the summer in the winter most of you aren't going to be out on your decks unless you have jacuzzis out there um, usually you're most concerned about screens nine months out of the year spring summer and fall so with that in mind let's say that this red line right here represents the property line and um, We'll go from there. Let's go down to the first option. This is what everybody does. This is what homeowners do. This is unfortunately what a lot of landscape contractors do. They say, well, we're just going to put a row of plants here. It doesn't really matter. When I do designs, in fact, when I do designs, I'm usually just looking about spatial relationships first. And you'll see in the drawings coming up, um, these circles could represent anything. These could represent evergreens. They could represent lilacs. They could represent a hedge. <laughs> Not too many years ago, they were actually using buckthorn as hedges. Sad to say, now it's invasive, at least here in Wisconsin. But this could represent any kind of plant at this point. Straight line, and um, you know, it, you think, well, that'll buff, that'll hide my neighbor. But here's what happens. The two most common ways that people plant things are they'll use evergreens, and most evergreens, especially spruces, are triangular in shape. Um, pine trees are a little fuller at the top than spruce trees are. Or if you're using like lilacs or viburnums or some other kind of plant here, um, nine bark here in Wisconsin people use, uh, it's in a straight line. And the problem with the basic problems with these two kind of hedges are one it looks like a screen whether it's deciduous or evergreen um, these are never going to screen your neighbor's house because uh, evergreens usually people make the mistake of using white pines here in wisconsin they only keep two to three years worth of needles and then drop everything else nurseries and garden centers get calls all the time that my white pines dying in the fall no it just sheds needles that are three years old so you've got white pines tend to be really leggy. Spruces are great screens because they keep five to seven years worth of needles. But the challenge is that they're triangular in shape. So if you plant these out here, and I always laugh at townships that in their regulations for planting say, oh, and put evergreens in. That offers virtually no screening, at least in anyone's lifetime. And when they do get 20 to 30 feet tall, they're not going to be well maintained. Uh, by most people, so they're not going to survive, especially since our evergreens here in Wisconsin are having a rough time surviving the much warmer summers that we're having. So um, they won't be a screen. Uh, we'll talk about spruces are better than pines. Um, but if one of these plants dies, let's say you come in here and let's take this. Okay, now this plant's gone. It's, you know, didn't do well, it's dead. Well now these other plants have gotten bigger and you come in here and now the new plant that you put in here is only going to be this tall. So now your whole thing is screwed up or if these are all the same plant then the challenge that you have is that if a disease comes in that affects spruce trees it's going to wipe your entire line of spruce trees out. If you just have a monoculture in any 
village, like with their city trees, where I grew up in, in northern Illinois. Uh, they had a beautiful elm trees, you know, arching over the street. Well, elm disease came in, wiped out all the elms because they had a monoculture. So that's an issue. You're just not going to be able to match them if one of the trees um, dies out. So and one of the other options is, uh, and this is not just homeowners, this is unfortunately with a lot of landscape contractors, they don't allow room for mature plant growth. This plant should probably have been, you know, planted over here. Oh, wait a minute, let's go back. This probably should have been um, right here. Why isn't that snapping? Let me back that up. But this plant should have been way over, uh, farther away from the planting bed. So once again, because property lines in most states you have air rights that go vertical so if your neighbor doesn't like you or a new neighbor comes in they can come in and go you know what we're just going to shear that side of the plant off so now you have an evergreen that has nothing on their side because it gets in the way of the swing set or the pool or the fence they want to put in so now you have planted your plant too close so poor planning on spacing up here um, these may be planted far enough away here depending on the variety but you have to allow for growth. So let's go to the next option. And the next option would be, okay, let's stagger the plant material. Maybe that'll give us better coverage. And in this instance, you may stagger them and you might say that, okay, these three trees are the same, this tree is a different species, these two are different, um, you know, those three and a different here. So you can start to break up the species maybe you're going, Okay, I'm breaking up the species, it's a little staggered, um, and you can do that. And what I, when I've done this in the past for clients, the other thing that I would recommend on the second step is you start using different plant sizes. Don't plant all five foot blue spruce, because you know you like blue spruce. Once again, like we talked about, something could come in that attacks blue spruce, and now all your spruce are, blue spruce are dead. So you use different varieties, use different sizes. I usually start with a five to six foot, six to eight, maybe an eight to 10, three different sizes, stagger them, and it looks a lot more natural. Same thing if you're using something deciduous. You might use a three or four foot tall viburnum and a six foot tall viburnum. Or service berries, if you want service berries in here. I love service berries in a hedge because um, they have a lot of interest, flowers, in the spring, great fall color, nice blue colored bark, steel colored bark in the winter. So, you know, you'd stagger it. This would be the next thing. What you'll see here is this distance also starts to get wider. So now it's eating up more of your side yard. You know, maybe you like to hit a golf ball back and forth. Maybe you have little kids that you want to be able to play out here. So this option eats up maybe another four or five feet of the yard if you're looking at that. And now you've got a mulch underneath all of these plants. That's my recommended. I've seen people just mulch around the base. That even creates more of an issue trying to get your lawnmower in through here. But now you've got to put, you know, 20 yards of mulch in here every three, four years. I don't put mulch down every year. That's a whole nother video. But people, you know, you've got that expense of putting mulch over this just something to think of you know if, if that's not an issue that's fine but you can't just plant these in the grass and one thing I meant to take a picture of this today when I went out for uh, down to Cedarburg there's a property that has probably a hundred evergreens planted over a two or three hundred foot long stretch and some of the evergreens all plant at the same time some of the evergreens they were put them in the ceilings like 18 inches tall, some are three feet tall, some are 12 feet tall. So your soil profile, especially if you live in a subdivision where they raked all the topsoil off and then sold it back to you, um, this evergreen might, even though these were planted the same size, same height, this one might grow very slowly, this one could grow fast. There's a lot of mother nature variables in these, in these screens. All right, let's go to the screen that I like the best. Uh, as you can see, now we've almost doubled the width of the screen from the beginning. 
but here I mean you could have this be an evergreen this could be a cup of service berry in here this could be viburnums in here some you know mock orange some double flowering mock orange that are really sweet some viburnums down here um, you know some spruces in here as well so this creates the most interest and then I was going to talk about this at the end but I can do this now is you could come in here and um, we'll change this to go with me nope okay so now you can come in here this is your deck over here Let's switch this one this is your deck right here the idea is to extend that or to extend the space in the interior if you've got windows here and you can come out here now and you might put the yellow may not show up great here but you can put some up lights on these trees and now this looks great out here at night uh, in a in a mixed bed like this it doesn't look so good if you've got a straight hedge but if you've got a mixed hedge like this it looks good so you can mix that up if you've got a prevailing if your prevailing wind is from this direction it also causes the prevailing wind to wrap around these plants which will actually dump the snow in this area right here so this can the very first design class I had at Iowa State we learned how to design wind breaks for farms because in Iowa there's nothing to slow the wind down from the west end of Iowa to the east end of Iowa even though there are hills at both ends by the river it's pretty flat in between and they build a lot of hedges just to protect the farmhouse or barns from severe winter winds so this also works well like that um, let's go down here and it looks roughly something like this you have evergreens staggered throughout here you might have like i said i have a plump service berry these could be witch hazels which uh, vernal witch hazels that bloom you know in the fall with their little yellow strands that come down these don't re reference um, blue shrubs they're just for a differentiation in color but these could be some type of more ornamental things these could be large perennials um, these could be um, you know compact viburnums or compact lilacs there's a lot of different combinations of plants here now see this type of hedge is going to be a lot more costly than just a straight row so yes there are budget constraints here but there's one other option here and sometimes this is the easiest one because obviously with this one you keep taking up this prime real estate here that you may want to put a pool in later as your kids grow up and they're out of the house you go you know what we're putting a pool in here now um, so you've got to think about down the road what you want to use for this land space right here okay but I like to do this one I did this in a project in Cedarburg people had a great home the woman was a fantastic gardener um, and their neighbor was their deck and stuff was a little bit more this way their neighbor but I think I put either three magnolias in here and then a bunch of uh, panicum ornamental grasses here and on the outside um, because you can come in here now and and this one you have these big specimen trees but then you can come in here this can be full of perennials you can wrap the perennials around the deck I don't say you should just stop at the corner you might add some more color out here and they don't have to be purple in color I'm just using this to say okay this is where perennials could be now this takes up a little more space in the back of the yard but it keeps the whole front of the yard um, nicer um, and you only need to buy three specimen trees and then a bunch of perennials some pops of annuals in here you can put a bird bath in here you can put a small water feature in here a self-contained water feature I, I really prefer this especially if you're on you know a tighter budget you can get some nice service berry please don't plant birch birch are sold like crazy since the 50s and they start dying in my opinion the day you put them in I don't care if it's river birch white birch European birch doesn't matter they die from the ground up they're constant maintenance 
and I just don't think they're great trees. And with things getting warmer, they don't do well, at least here in southeast Wisconsin. Birch trees up in Tomahawk, Minocqua, Wausau, they look great in the woods because they've got a lot of natural content from the leaves falling down. So there's lots of organic matter. They do well, but you put them in a hot urban landscape or a suburban landscape, they stress. These should be things like service berries and witch hazels and hawthorns and that type of thing. Don't use burning bushes. That's an invasive plant and they don't do they require pruning. If you put service berry in here, uh, in these, if you put service berry in these three plants, um, or well spaced witch hazel, all you gotta do is thin them out and do some characteristic pruning, which will be a whole nother video on getting dirty with Glenn. But um I think I like this option the best. So that's just a quick thing to give you all the options from simple right up against your deck to the more complex and obviously most costly option right here that has great aesthetics to, uh, you know, a slight variable in sizes and layout here and then uh, the original old school. So those are the things you need to think about. If you want more information, you can always go to gettingdirtywithglenn.com. Check out my blog. Check out the videos. It has links to other YouTube uh, videos that I'll be posting. And I just want to share my 45 years of experience. I have a degree in landscape architecture from Iowa State. And um, I just want to share the expertise that I've developed over those 45 years, designing gardens uh, for large residential and estate properties on the East Coast and here in southeast Wisconsin. So that's it. This is Glenn Riker for Getting Dirty with Glenn, and I will see you out in the garden.